Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Straight into it. So guys, I wanted to, to cover these. Uh, I want to help you understand and talk about uh, talk about conscious creation, which I think is a very, very, very important thing. Uh, a lot of times we can get ourselves caught up in, in trying to make sense of things rather than just creating. Uh, you know, who, who's found themselves getting caught up in all these other things? Like, why is that or why that? Uh, hey, James, cool, good to see you. Uh, and instead of just getting ourselves right, what are we creating? What are we going to focus on? And it's such a different paradigm. You know, it's a very different paradigm, these two, these two places. You know, one is, one is, you know, trying to make sense of something, problem solving, figuring out. The other one is just focused on creating. And, uh, and this is a very, very, very important uh, way of being. So I want to cover a few principles. The first principle is the law of action, the obvious action. And so everyone write this down. There is always an obvious and fast path to take. There's always the obvious next thing you should be doing. And if you don't know the obvious thing you should be doing, well, then the obvious thing is what? To figure out what you should be doing. Does that make sense? Uh, and it's weird because people sometimes say, well, you know, just surrender or this or that, right? But, but, but here's the truth. And this is, this is just what's true. There's no such thing as non-acting, right? Non-taking action. So, uh, you know, my, my mentor uh, used to always say this to me. He goes, hey, Chris, there's nothing you need to do but there's always action to take. There's nothing you need to do, but there's always action to take. And this took me a long time to get my head around. What do you mean there's nothing I need to do but action to take? And, and what I realized is that we're always taking an action. Even procrastination is an action, right? We, we got this idea that there's such a thing as inaction. Well, well everything is an action. We're always doing something. And so, so a lot of times, you know, if we wanted to, to create something, we just need to take the right action. See a lot of people, they want to, you know, they want to sit in manifestation and wait for the perfect, you know, I see this a lot in the business community. Just, just let me know if you've ever seen this. You see someone say, um, you know, uh, manifest your soul clients or manifest your dream clients or manifest money. It's just going to manifest. Right. And so, so the example that, uh, that, that I give is, you know, say you're thirsty, right? That's the tension, you're thirsty, okay? And, uh, you know, here's a cup right now, it's empty, but if it had water in it, the obvious action would be just to drink it, right? And then you're not thirsty anymore. But what we can try to do is we can try to not take the right action. No, 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 I just want the water to hydrate me. I don't wanna actually have to drink it. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all these other things to try to have it there. And so here's the key point. First principle, the principle of just taking the obvious action. You know, the obvious action is go and ask people to buy your services, right? That's the obvious action, right? And so, you know, when I see these, oh, you know, I'm just going to sit here and wait for them to show up. Maybe that will work, right? However, what's obvious is do that and then take the action. Who agrees with that? So, so there's always an obvious action. This is principle number one. The, the second principle is the principle of attraction, right? If you plant seeds of, of um, scarcity, that's what you're going to grow. And, and we know that the law of attraction is true, right? We can plant two different types of seeds in the same soil, same fertilizer, same sun, same water, same everything, and they're going to attract different things. Give me a yes if you agree with that. That You know, you have to agree with that, right? You can't be like, no, Chris, it doesn't work. Like, just go down to the supermarket, get two different packets of seeds. They'll look similar put them both in the exact same soil and just watch it happen. There, it's irrefutable that there is a principle of attraction. There, there's, there's no way you can refuse that truth. And so we're planted here in the universe and we've got a certain resonance. We are, we are resonating at a certain, a certain way and that is gonna attract people and things and circumstances, but also when we're feeling a different way, we take different actions, which leads us to a different path as well. So the principle of attraction is simply, you must be it before you see it. You see, a lot of, a lot of people, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a walk and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, 
say some incantations, you know, for uh, half an hour, and then the rest of my day, I'm just going to be myself. Uh, that's not how you're going to attract just because you do a meditation once for, for 30 minutes in the morning that that's not who you are for the whole day you're going to uh, <laughs> you're going to attract what you are right what you are not what others think about you not what you think about you what you are it doesn't matter if you go on that seed and you say hey carrot seed you know please be a pumpkin seed, please, 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 you're a pumpkin seed, I see you as a pumpkin seed, I'm consciousness, I'm the observer, I'm going to collapse you into a new reality, that's what's, no, it's, it's a freaking strawberry seed, bro. it's not going to happen, so uh, number three is the law or the principle of having a clear vision, having a clear vision, is anyone writing these out, by the way, the first one was the law of the obvious action, law of attraction, third one is uh, clear vision, clear vision, if you're an archer and you pull your bow back and you've got 20 targets you're trying to hit, you got one arrow, you're never going to hit it. In fact, you're going to stall. Which one should I hit? Which one should I hit? So there, you must get a clear vision in the areas of life that are important to you. We, we talk about a core four, finances, fulfillment, fun, family. We, we talk about a core four having a very clear vision. I want you to get this. If you've got a clear vision, but it's on way too many things, you're going to find yourself stalling out. You just need to have a clear vision of what it is you're trying to hit. You can never hit it uh, unless it's clear. The fourth principle is the principle of least resistance. Least resistance. We are always taking the path of least resistance. This is always the path we'll take. However, it's not always the obvious path. Does that make sense? Like there's an obvious action that you need to take here. And then there's the the path of least resistance. Hey, Karen. Hey, Dean. Thanks for typing in. Thanks for being here, by the way. Thanks for being here. The, the principle of least resistance, water is going to flow in the same direction as its structure. It's not going to go anywhere else. And so when you've got structures in your mind, right, let's say you think that there's such a, there's a problem of being rejected by others right? That's a structure held in your mind. So you're not going to go and do things that could cause that to be ha to happen. If you've got a structure in your mind that, you know, financial failure is, is permanent and it's bad, you're not going to go a certain way. You're not able to do things. And so structure creates behavior. Does that make sense, everyone? And you will take the path of least resistance. Yeah. Uh, what James says, vision, what, purpose, why, action, how, beliefs. Cool. I think I'm not, I think you just add into it. I think you just add into it. I think it's, I think you say, hey, here's some extra stuff, <laughs> which is good. Um, yeah, cool, cool. So, so really understanding the law of least resistance because we just want you to be in flow, right? You just need to be in flow to what you get. And I, I need everyone to get this is it's not personal. Hey, it, it, creating is, is structural. It's a structure that says, I just easily go this way. And you can flow to what you want in any way that you choose. It's your freaking structure. Does that make sense? A lot of times we get told these structures, you know, you've got to think a certain way. You've got to pray to a certain God. You've got to feel a certain thing. It's just not true. Success isn't personal. Success is structural. You just create it. You just got to have no resistance to it. Okay. And, you know, I, I give examples like Warren Buffett or Lady Gaga or Michael Jackson, uh, people that are, you know, Steve Jobs, people have been able to create success. Oprah Winfrey, JK Rowling, people have been able to create success without having to, you know, be perfect or be a certain way. They've done it their way. And, and here's the structure is the structure, it was that's the way it should go just an easy, an easy flow. There was no resistance to them going there. Does that mean they had to be perfect or download some perfect beliefs? No, it just meant that they had to have no resistance to it. And, and this is so freeing to me because we all got to understand that it's not personal and we don't need to fix ourselves. We just need to, to have the right structure. So that's, that's the fourth principle um, for today. Uh, the fifth principle is the, the principle of focus attention right, is focused attention, focused attention, 
Focus attention is very important. A lot of us are like a surgeon who goes into to do a surgery with uh, the TV on and the radio on and checking their phone every two minutes. Could you imagine that? You, you, you go in, you're about to get put, it, put to go under, go to sleep, and uh, there's, your, there's your surgeon. Like, oh, they've got the football game on there, they're listening to some music there, and they've just got their phone on just in case something comes up. Right, uh, you know, are you going to trust that surgeon with your life? Probably not. But a lot of us are like that surgeon in life, right? We're trying to create, but we're so split attention. We're not just focused. We're not just here. We're not just on it. And so, when you want to really create something, you got to get your attention in the right place. I would much prefer to do an hour and a half focused attention than a day of you know trying to do everything all at once. So really understand that, that you really can focus your attention, which goes on to the, the next principle, which is the law or the principle of focused energy. Focused energy is similar to focused attention, but focused energy, it, it, basically the example is like a knife. If you have a rock and a knife, okay, the knife, you can push the same amount of pressure on both of them, right? But a knife focuses all that energy on a point. So when you focus your energy, when you get really clear on what it is that you want, focus energy, focus energy, oh, this is what it is, and you go, here's where I am, and you get in that focused tension, that's going to create, because you take all of you and you put it on something. Too often, all of us take some of that energy, and instead of focusing it on what we want, we take half of it or more and focus it on what we don't want. Then we take another part of that energy and we focus it on what other people think. Then we take another part of that energy and we focus it on our backup plan. You see? And all of a sudden, out of 100% of our energy that could be focused on just what we're creating, maybe we're giving it 10%. Maybe we're giving it 10%. Who gets that, by the way? Who totally knows that they can have their energy go around like this? And if they could just get themselves to have full 100% of them focused on what they're going for, manifestation is going to happen so much faster. So let's do a quick recap. The principle of the obvious action, the principle of attraction, principle of a clear vision, the principle of least resistance, the principle of focused attention, principle of focused energy, focused energy. Create, you are an energy source and you get your creation in the right place and you get the right structure, things happen so fast. The next is the principle of cause and effect or action and reaction. You are always taking an action. No matter what you're doing, even procrastination is an action. You are always taking an action. And know that whatever action you take is creating an effect, okay? And we have to really, really, really get this, is whatever you plant will grow. And so just because you stopped as, and you started planting something else, it doesn't mean that those other things have just disappeared. You've caused, there's an effect that's got to play out. And so really get this, everything you do has an effect. There's always a cause and effect. Everything you have is because of something. There is always a cause and you're, you're part of that creation, and sometimes others are creating onto you. So it's a very important principle to understand. The next principle is the principle of tension or disequilibrium. Love it, Mindy, thanks. The principle of tension or disequilibrium. If you have a dam and a bunch of water um, pushes up against that dam, there's a disequilibrium that if the dam was to open, the water would go through, okay? There's no water on this side, lots of water on this side. The, the universe abhors a void, doesn't want to have a void, doesn't want to have disequilibrium. I like to think about it with tension. Tension, like a rubber band, you pull it apart, will always seek resolution. Well, in society, we've got an idea that tension is bad. Now, we think tension is bad. I'm here, I want to be there. Oh, well, that's bad. No, tension's creating. Tension creates, you know, I'm single, I, I want to have a relationship. I want that relationship. That tension, that, that's what creates. Tension 
fundamentally creates. We've all felt sexual tension, the magnetic pull that brings two humans together to what? Create. Tension creates. Tension is a universal principle of creation. And so when you go, I'm here and I've got, you know, $100,000 in income and I want to have a million dollars in income, that tension structure is fine. You know, it's going to close the gap. When we take the two points of creation, what do I want? Where am I now? We take these two points and then we, we go, wow, I feel the tension. I want to be there. Then we keep aligning ourselves up here. This, this is going to move. Tension turns into momentum. Yeah, it's a good one. Peter says, it's a big shift realizing that tension is a tool to be used than feeling uncomfortable with it. Tension is a tool. If you tell your brain, I want to be there, there is good, and here is good, but I want to be there, this is where I'm going, you create that tension, your brain is going to find ways to get there. Give me a yes if that makes sense. You will find ways. When you make that decision, when you say that is it, you create the tension, your brain is going to find ways. That's what I'm becoming. And you don't know the way, by the way. You don't know how you're going to get there to start off with. I've heard a lot of people go, yeah. Chris, I made a decision. I was going to become a life changing. I was going to change lives and be a speaker this year. And then I seen your video on YouTube and it's perfect. And I go, yeah, well, you created it, right? You, you, you stepped into the end result. You said, that's what I want. And then you didn't know what would show up. And then there it is. It turns up because your brain finds ways to get there. Universe, including yourself, doesn't like a void, doesn't like tension, doesn't like it. So the next one is the law or the principle of evolution. If you don't use it, you lose it. Hebb's principle, neurons that fire together, wire together. Look, as a species, as an animal on this planet, we're always able to evolve. We're always able to learn new things and we're always able to forget. In fact, some people say to me, but Chris, you know, it's hard for me to learn new things. I'm old. And I go, well, instead of learning new things, let's use something you're good at. Let's just forget things. Let's just forget anxiety. Let's forget doubt. Let's forget your fear of failure. You already told me you're good at forgetting things. So let's just forget some of these things, right? Let's just let it go, right? Let's let it go because the space will mean new things can, can turn up. Let's let it go then. You're great at forgetting. Forget, forget your um, self-sabotage plan. Forget, forget the past. Let it go. You already told me you're good at it. And, and so, so there's a principle that says, uh, we can always evolve. We can always learn new ways of being. We can always learn new memories. We can always learn. We can always evolve. We can always learn. And, you know, uh, neuroscientists and the study of neuroplasticity and, and you know, uh, epigenetics and, and these other things show that, yeah, we physically change and learn uh, as we adapt. And it's, it's really interesting when you, when you look at field structures because children – of parents who have learned a certain thing come into this world with a amazing understanding of that. Now, even when these children don't ever know their parents, maybe they're adopted out, maybe the parents um, pass away at a young age before they can learn any of these things, no contact, the, the children have an innate uh, speed at picking things up. And it's like the parent creates a field of learning that it's easier for the kid to, to learn through. And Rupert Sheldrake studied a lot about morphogenic fields. I think morphogenic fields are fascinating. Uh, one, of the, one of the fascinating structures about morphogenic fields or understandings is he did this study that um, proves that dogs know, dogs know when their owners are coming home. Have you guys seen this? By the, who, who's seen Rupert Sheldrake's work? Who's seen this? It's um, yeah, it, it, there's a really great, uh, it's, it's old now, but, it, but, but a really good documentary on, uh, on YouTube. And it's so cool because they, they have the dog at home, right? And they, um, they have, uh, you know, the, the owner miles away and they're filming what the dog's up to. They're filming the owner. And so the owner, instead of uh, coming home in the normal car, like gets in a taxi. And as soon as the owner gets in a taxi, the dog stands up the exact time, walks over to the door and starts waiting. As the taxi drives down the street, the dog starts wagging his tail. There's no way the dog could know that the owner was in the taxi. It was, uh, it's incredible stuff. Anyway, morphogenic fields. But what I was talking about <laughs> was the law of evolution and, and understand that we can always evolve. We can always learn.
So the last principle, guys, the tenth principle is the principle of the placebo. The principle of the placebo and the nocebo. Every single drug that gets put onto the market is tested against a placebo. And one of the one of the best ways to describe a placebo is an inert substance that creates a unlikely result. And so they test, you know, depression pill, everything gets tested against a placebo because they know that placebos work. Just by telling someone this thing will do this, if the person accepts that, then the result can, can take action, can take place. So they test everything. And anyone with a scientific brain um, must, uh, must agree to the placebo. They must know that a placebo is true. Now, what's interesting is there's also something called a nocebo, which is the opposite of a placebo. This is when something is proven to work, but the person believes it won't. They're told it won't work, or, and they have the belief it won't work. They create a way for it not to work. Does that make sense, everyone? So they, that's called a nocebo. Now, here's what's interesting about that. What makes it work or not work? What makes it work or not work? Belief, yeah, the power of our mind. And so what that means is, even if something's proven to work, like a recode, proven to work, thousands of people had amazing results, proven huge, that people could still make it not work, right? They could still choose to make it not work. Proven that our mind is capable to create healings, which is for me, it's the smoking gun that we can connect to a super conscious facility that can create change it is so 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 cool hey so quick question who likes uh my quick 10 laws or principles that i just went through i uh but not everything it's not complete it's actually something i was just working on for the uh uh the cert group yesterday and, and so when when rochelle um messaged me saying she's having heaps of um problems I, I jumped jumped on will only has nine well dude that's that's just perfect here's the 10 number one is uh, obvious action. Number two, attraction. Number three, clear vision. Number four, least resistance. Number five, focused attention. Number six, focused energy. Number seven, uh, cause and effect or action reaction. Number number eight, uh, tension or disequilibrium. Number nine, evolution or change. And number 10, placebo. Did you get them? Can someone, who, who's got the list on a Word doc and can just type them all in for someone? There's someone, someone will have it, someone will go copy paste. Real. Love it. So of all that being said, uh, you're a powerful creator. You are a powerful creator. You are a powerful human being. You are powerful. You are powerful. Powerful. All right, who's going to who who's got ten extra points that that type them out? That can type them in. Who's got it? Did anyone do it? Kate does. Yes, ten points to Gryffindor. Peter did it. Thanks, brother. Done. Awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. So you're a powerful creator. <laughs> Phil's got an 11th one. <laughs> uh, you're a very, very powerful creator. You have the ability to, to create. Everything in your life is actually your creation. You've chosen to continue. You created this course. You created being here. And you're a very powerful creator. And when you step into this idea, when you step into this identity that you are the powerful creator of your own life and that you, you are not a victim to circumstances, to conditioning, to anything, powerful creator, the whole world shifts with you, the whole world. Can I comment on Recode and children? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a it, you know go through the five steps it's a really good thing yeah i'm not sure who asked that by the way whoever asked uh always i see is a number 
um, a number. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I normally don't um, have all the commands. I normally just jump in and I say, hey, uh, do this. Obviously, you need to have permission from the parents. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Good question. Um, you're a powerful creator. And so you're creating your body. You're not your body. You're a powerful creator that creates your body. You, you're a creator. You create your relationships. You're not your relationships. You created them. You're not your strengths. You created them. You're not your weaknesses. You created them. You're a powerful, powerful, powerful creator. And I want to step you into that today, into this identity that you are this powerful creator. It's like you're going where you want to go in a way that you want to go there, feeling the way that you want to feel in the exact perfect way you want. And yes, as you're a powerful creator, other people are also creating. So somewhere, someone, something has created a virus and created a economic situation that we're all in. And, but that's great. We've got to observe it. And then we've got to be powerful creators of where we're going. Does that make sense? And go, this is what I'm going to create. We can spend a lot of time. Well, why, why me, why this, but it, maybe it wasn't even you. Maybe there was nothing else you could do. And so the quicker we accept and focus, the better. True, the quicker you accept, let go, focus, the better it is for you and everyone else, right? This is where we're at, what's our obvious action, where are we going, true? So it's very important to step into this, I'm a powerful creator, I create it all, I'm in true choice, I create everything, it's me, I'm doing it. And no matter what shows up, maybe some other powerful creators or co-created something, but that's what's happened, I'm gonna continue to create what I want. Make sense? Because what happens is in every situation, there are always winners and there are always people that, that, that find a way to not, not win. Always, always. There's, there's winners and, and, not, and people who are choosing not to win. And by winning, I mean creating what they choose, right? Creating what they choose. I've seen this, um, this, this business that's popped up um, because there's so many people working from home where for under, under $5,000, this guy is making these um, backyard office, office sheds, and they're about the size of a desk. So the size of a desk, and then they have, obviously have a roof, and they have a window, they have a sliding door, and uh, they're out away from his family, and it's under five grand, you can get one of these things set up. Basically, like, it's a tiny little box in his backyard, but it's, it's um, soundproof, got good air conditioning, well lit, power, these things. And uh, he's setting it up for under five grand. And he's just got this business out of nowhere, right? It doesn't even look that difficult to make. You just need to have someone with building skills and there's a business. And I thought, wow, look at that just popping up so fast. You know, how great is that? I see someone else, you know, so there's so much. There's always people who are going to find a way to win. And I, and I want all of us to be those winners. I want us to be that. Who agrees? There's always a way for you to create what you want under any circumstances. And, and there's stories, right? Nelson Mandela, Viktor Frankl, who, who've had terrible stuff happen to them, you know, imprisoned, uh, you know, incorrectly, or, you know, in a crazy World War II situation they had to create. And so I'm just so, so, so blessed to to have this mindset, right? To have this mindset that no matter what gets co-created, I'm the powerful creator of where I'm going. Does that make sense? Because if we're in the uh, acknowledgement that everyone in the world is a powerful creator, right? If we can all acknowledge that, what that means is at times, others have created a circumstance that maybe we don't want. And so what we can do is we can get annoyed at that, try to blame ourselves, or we can just acknowledge we're not the only force creating here. So we go, okay, this is where I'm at. Where, what's, where and what am I creating now? What am I going? See, sometimes we, well, how do I create disease? It was, there's no need to, to figure out how or why. It's what is the obvious action? And if you don't know the obvious action, well, then the obvious action is to find out. So we go through our five steps and we're going to do that. So we're going to choose step one to be a powerful creator. 
So I would like everyone to make that choice right now and, uh, and, and write that down on a piece of paper. I choose, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it with you. I, I've signed you really enjoy actually uh, co-creating with you. So let, let's just choose it. You can either type in or write it down. I choose to be a powerful creator. The way that I do it is I write it down and, and my coaches will know, I draw a circle around this. I make it a circle. I make it a, a moment in time, space, reality. So I've written here, I am a powerful creator and I've just drawn a circle around it, okay? So, so what I wanna do now is I want us all to step into that reality, okay? We're gonna collapse time, space into this reality. We're gonna step into you being a, powerful creator and i want you just to experience what shows up when you do it so just no expectations no thinking just step right in Are you ready so close your eyes and step into the end result of being a powerful creator now Notice how it feels. I'm a powerful creator. Notice what images pop up. I'm a powerful creator. I'm choosing where I'm going. I'm choosing what I'm created, creating. I am that. How does it feel to be this? Just breathe it in and I yourself to feel it. I am a power. I'm so I'm I'm in creation. I'm forward focused, action orientated. I'm in creation. No matter what's thrown at me, I'm focused. I'm a creator. Just notice how that feels to be a, 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 a straight focused creator, straight on what you want. Mm, feels so good. Stay there with your eyes closed. Let's bring in some of these principles. So let's bring in the principle of action. Notice that you, you take the obvious action. Stay in this and just notice that you always take the obvious action. It's just you take the action. I want you to step into the second principle of attraction. Be it. Be the powerful creator right now. How does it feel to know that you create? You know how to create. You know what you're doing. Just choose it. That's it. Step into a clear vision, the clear vision of what you will create as this powerful career. No matter what is thrown at you, what will you create? Ah, oh, heaven on earth. What is your heaven on earth? What is your clear vision? Keep your eyes closed. Stay in this end result. And kind of just accept that this is you that you, you're, you're in charge, you create anything you want. And I just want you to notice how it feels and kind of just bask in this. How does it feel to be this powerful? So just keep your eyes closed. I'm just gonna choose this for everyone on this call and everyone on the recording. I choose for all of you to know your true potential as a powerful creator of your own destiny. Great, that feels good. Open your eyes and come back. So how's that? How did that feel to step into that? Be that, become it. Where's everyone at? Pop in the chat box. Are you guys back? <laughs> Pretty amazing, fun and amazing. Good. Awesome, powerful. I'm glad it felt powerful. Nice. Nice, expansive, clear. This is, this is the place that you want to live from, the powerful creator of your own destiny, your own life. You're in creation always. No, there's no, there's no one else.
<laughs> Fair enough, Jim. Jim, just you said that just to me. Can I share with everyone else? Because they all think I'm a weirdo for just laughing at that. <laughs> Jim says, I think I had a mindgasm. <laughs> it's funny. So, so you've done that. You, you, you've done that. So now let's just tune into the now. So, so in the current reality compared to that, and just, you might close your eyes. You might just notice, well, what's it like now? Okay. What's it like now? Oh, I get, I get knocked off by um, thinking about the economy. I get knocked out of powerful creator when, uh, you know, when, when I look at, you know, 10 million people lost their jobs or whatever it is, right? What, 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 how is it now? You know, now I feel good, but if someone says this, it knocks me out or, or I'm, how do you, how's the now? Just notice it, observe, observe yourself. Where is it that you give your power away? Right, oh, the economy or the government or the conspiracy theory or the, the health condition or I can't leave my house or I, you know, I can't. Where, where, where do you give it away? Just, just notice that. Just notice that. You know, I couldn't do that because of this situation or, you know, because of this thing um this person this person annoys me this see see how we give our power away notice how you can give your power away to other people right and it can be in positive as well if this person does this i feel good if they do this i feel bad right the power is in the other person notice how you can give your power away to emotions right like it, you know anxiety just takes over it's weird sometimes we in society we've got this idea that our emotion is more powerful than us you know, like, oh, this emotion, yeah, I can't get out of it. Like, what are you talking about? It's your emotion. Uh, you know, situations, right? Circumstances. How about how many of us can get knocked out of being a powerful creator by money? If I have a lot of it, I feel good. But if I don't have a lot of it, I feel bad, right? Where's the power? The power is in the money. You're giving it away. True. And, and so, look, let's unpack because we want to be a powerful creator no matter what. We want to be able to create that. The emotions we want, the life we want, no matter what is thrown at us. Okay, so so let's unpack what is in the way between you now and feeling and being a powerful creator, a hundred percent of the time. What is in the way? So first off, what beliefs do you have? Right, what beliefs do you have that are in the way? Well, you know, I believe that um, I believe that money is going to give me freedom. I believe that having a relationship will mean that I, I'll get more love. I believe that, where are these beliefs? Just, and just sit with this for a second. Just sit with this and see what's there. So here's my question. How much resistance do you have you created to being a powerful creator all the time? So this is exciting. I'm excited about this choice. I am a powerful creator. Look, there's there's aspects and part of you that don't want to believe that you're a powerful creator because these parts of you prefer to blame others for your circumstances. Just parts of you, not all of you, but parts of you prefer to blame others for circumstances. And, and here's why. It's just the path of least resistance. It's much easier to blame the food industry or the drug industry or this person or that person or this or there. It's much easier they to say, well, I've created this and I'm going to share a story. I created a huge financial crisis for myself four years ago. Uh, huge. I went from four and a half million dollars uh, turnover, about 400 grand a month to hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Bang, like that. My best friend and business partner was killed. Now, now he died, right? And that was, that was bad. And so I sat myself in a victim. Yeah, because he died, you know, now I'm in this and that. 
But then I realized after about six months, to be honest, that there were so many things that I did to actually create the financial crisis that I ended up with. Number one, sure, we were making 400 a month, but I was spending 380, you know, so there was no profit. Number two, I hadn't bothered having a backup plan, right? You'd think if you're moving it at that much, you would take, you know, 10% and have, I didn't. You think, you know, I'd have like key person insurance or have more systems around them or all these things. Does that make sense? And so, no, I didn't create the event, but I created the, the circumstances. Does that make sense? Like, and, I, and I had to admit that, that I created it. But there were so many parts of me that didn't want to admit it. it was so easier to walk around as a victim. You know, it was because of this. Not me. I'm good. It's because of this thing. You see, it's not me that didn't save. It's not me that didn't get sorted. It's not me that didn't go and start a new thing. It's not me that lived in fear. No, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> this is what I was saying to myself, right? It wasn't me. <laughs> and uh, at some point I had to realize, well, no, you know, it wasn't your fault that, that he died, but it was oh, 100% your responsibility how much pain that caused you. And so then I was like, all right, cool, it was me. Yes, it was me. And as soon as I internalized that it was me, and I was the powerful creator, then I realized it was me. And as soon as I allow it to be me, then I can choose to operate from a new place. Does that make sense? And so now this new crisis comes around four, four and a bit years down the track, four and a half years down the track, right? Guess what? This time, I, I, I know I've learned because this time is completely different. All the things I had to let go of and sort out and figure out, this time I'm rock solid. And so that's a really, really good example of the difference between being a powerful creator and a victim to circumstances. Does that make sense, everyone? The powerful creator is the one that accepts that they've created it, knows it's them, clears and shifts and gets into it and knows that bad things can happen, but the powerful creator always wins.